Arden is cool. It is a fast, IP-based wireless mesh network using cheap commercial components. Because it is self-organized, it is easy to use. Its initial purpose was for emergency communication, but it is also a lot of fun without an emergency. Today we will build our first network and connect it to the Swiss Digital Net. Beginners can learn what it needs and experienced users see how we solve things. Hello wireless enthusiasts. Here is the channel with a strange Swiss distortion in this signal, with a new video around wireless and other exciting stuff. Remember to subscribe if you do not want to miss the following emissions. The Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network is not for lonely wolves. It needs a group of interested people to build a network. And, as with most things on this channel, it needs an amateur radio license. In this video I covered an overall picture of modern ham radio. Today I will continue with one of its main components. Because of the many possibilities, covering everything in one short video is impossible. This is why I will begin with an overview and links to resources if you want to start immediately. In future videos I will cover some aspects in detail. What will be covered today? We will start with the structure of the network we will build. Then we will cover the devices we will use and why. Next, we will prepare the different devices. This means we have to flash new software and do some configurations. This chapter will not be profound and I will show you links for additional information. Then I will connect my router to the Swiss Digital Net and extend the network in different directions, without asking anybody and without administration. Worldwide there are many operational RDN networks available. I was lucky to know a few guys with a running network, so I was able to connect to their Swiss Digital Net. However, it is no problem if you do not know anybody with an operational node. Then you become the first in your area. Let's start to build our network. It will consist of a router in my shack, connected to the Swiss Digital Net through a tunnel offered by my colleague. A voice over IP telephone will be connected to my router as the first user of the network. We use telephones as the first use case because it is simple and in the beginning we have to have a lot of conversations. Why not use our own network for that? Then we will extend the Swiss Digital Net with a tunnel to one of my colleagues in a different place. He could do the same and extend his network to others. This is the power of self-organizing mesh networks. All those connections are via internet, not via air. So they are not helpful in emergencies, but they are valuable for getting your hands dirty and learning the technology. As a last step, we will add a wireless link to the other side of the valley and try out a telephone call over the air. If you are lucky and there is a wireless network in your area, you do not need internet tunnels, of course. This network gives you all the essential components to build an Arden net. Before we continue, Arden is one of the best documented projects I know. You should find most information on this page. Here you find the supported devices as well as the needed firmware. If you do not find your device in the official list, you might go to the nightly build list where you sometimes find the newer devices. We also started a page called dhamstack.com where you find additional information like an innovative phone book. Let's start building our network with the first component a Microtik HAP router for around $60. You will later see that this router is the Swiss army knife of Arden. The second hand voice over IP telephone can be bought on the usual platforms. Currently they are replaced with Microsoft Teams in many corporations. For the moment we standardized on Yealink phones to ease the support. If you choose another brand, check its powering possibilities. Most of them can be powered by 48 volt power over Ethernet. Unfortunately, 48 volt is not a typical voltage available in ham radio. 
The Yellings offer a 5 volt barrel jack, which is better suited. This MicroTik router is universally used because of its unique features. Port 1 can be connected to your home network to create tunnels. Port 2 to 4 can be used to connect local equipment like telephones or laptops to Arden. And Port 5 has 24 volt PoE capability. Perfect for connecting and powering such small access points. Please do not mix these ports because they are programmed precisely for a purpose. When you purchase standard Wi-Fi gear, it does not know what Arden is. So you have to flash it with new firmware from the Arden documentation. I leave all the needed links for flashing the different devices in the video description. Flashing the devices is not too complex if you strictly follow the instructions. Otherwise you have to start over. Now we have our router flashed and set up. For the node names, we use our call sign as the first letters. The rest is free to choose. I use parts of the device name plus a running number. Looking at our network map, we now have to connect it to another Arden node using an internet tunnel. Such a tunnel consists of a server and a client. Your partner has to set up a tunnel for your router and you have to set up his server in your tunnel client. To do that, we connect port 1 of the router to our home network using an Ethernet cable. When we type localnode.local.mesh into the browser, we are connected to our router. Here you see an example of a tunnel. This is the service site and this the client site. This address is either the fixed IP address of your counterpart's network or his DIN DNS name. If this is his first tunnel, he must open port 5525 on his firewall, by the way. Clients do not need to open this port. As soon as you insert and save these three fields in your tunnel client setup, your tunnel will start to work. In mesh status, you should see all participants of the net. In my case, I see the whole Swiss digital net. Now I can connect a telephone to ports 2, 3 or 4. The telephone has to be set up to work with the other telephones. I will leave a link to our setup and cover this part in a future video. Now I can call my fellow hams and receive their calls. As a test, I call a PBX. You are currently the only person in this conference. According to our diagram, I will extend the network to my colleague. I create a tunnel server with the node name of my colleague and open port 5525 in my firewall. Like that, he can connect to the Swiss Digital Net too, without additional administration. Next, I want to add a wireless link. The simplest way to get our first wireless connection is to add two small MikroTik or Ubiquiti access points. Their range should be a few kilometers or miles on a line of sight. Now comes the big question. Which band should we use for our connection? Theoretically, we have three choices, 2.4, 3.3 and 5.8 gigahertz. For me, the decision is clear because 3.3 gigahertz is no longer available here and the equipment is expensive anyway, I will avoid it immediately. 2.4 GHz is very crowded and we only have a few channels available. For a performing network, also not the right choice. So I will go with 5.8 GHz. Here we have many channels available for our usage. Please check the legal requirements in your country. I will extend my shack network to a telephone connected to the second access point and go to the other side of the valley to see if it wirelessly connects to the Swiss digital net. For preparation, I flash and set up two small access points with antennas and built-in transceivers. They have to use the same channel, of course. As said before, they can be connected to port 5 of the router to power them via PoE. Here I place the first access point using a 3D printed holder pointing to the other side of the valley. For our mobile station, I use the second access point and the second telephone. 
Many people built their Go boxes with all the needed components. So far I have none. But I found this lovely little box on AliExpress. It offers 5V for the telephone and 24V PoE for the access point. And it contains a battery that lasts a few hours. Exactly what we need. So I grab my spare tripod, my e-bike and all other needed parts to drive to the other side of the valley. Now I'm about one kilometer away from my home. After setting up the access point, I connect it to my laptop and fire up the Arden menu. While pointing the access point towards my home, my laptop creates a variable frequency sound that helps find the maximum signal. Good idea because I do not have to look at the PC while pointing. Now I call my colleague for a test. Ja, ich bin's noch mal. Okay. Also, aber das klappt tip top da. Ja, ja, genau. Also, Messi, schönen Abend. Oh. Tschüss. Okay, tschüss. Bitte. Cool. We have created a hybrid network that can be extended in all directions. Like our friends in Southern California, who already operate an extended Arden network. In one of the following videos, we will discuss organizing telephony. Arden offers two ways of connecting telephones. Using a PBX on a Raspberry Pi or a direct connection from telephone to telephone. The direct connection has many advantages in a disaster mesh network, but it has a significant drawback. It is not user-friendly. Until the next video, where I will show how we combine the two. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. 73 to everybody. And please consider supporting the channel by using the links in the description. See you in the next episode.